welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be sharing how I paint birds. So I did an Instagram stories box a few weeks ago asking for some video ideas and one of the ones that came up was how to paint birds and nature and I have got a video about fish which was another request which is more just showing the process so I'll pop that up in the cards if you're interested in seeing that one. But in today's video I really want to share more about my process and really explain how I do paint birds. So this is the book that I'm referencing and it's called Birds, A General Introduction to Ornithology and I picked it up second hand and it's a really lovely one because I feel like there's lots of different poses of birds, there's also things like their eggs and there's also a page about feathers and it's not just images of birds in like one pose, there's also ones of them flying and it just feels like a good all-rounder if you did want to draw birds in more active poses. So I'm also going to be working in my A5 Royal Talon sketchbook. This is the 13 by 21 centimeter size and the one I'm reaching for the most during my daily art challenge. And if you've seen a lot of my work before and my process videos, you'll know that I don't often sketch first, but I do find it really helpful with birds, especially to get their proportions right. Obviously it doesn't have to be exact, but I like to put down some guidelines, just mostly for the head and to get that join between the head and the body right because I think that's the most tricky part about making a bird look right and then I'm adding that another bird up in the top left corner so I'm doing a long tailed tit and then a collared dove. For this layout I specifically wanted them to like fit together so the one on the left which is the long tailed tit it really rounds down the tail kind of frames the collared dove really nicely and I think it works with this layout because they're kind of looking at each other whereas I think if they were facing the other way then it wouldn't look quite as effective. So I'm going to be using gouache today which is one of my favourite mediums. I'm starting by putting down some colours on my palette so I've got a peachy pink, an ochre, a warm grey, a brown and then a lot of white. And one of the main techniques I use when painting birds is I'm very light with my brush strokes and I'm constantly going back to my palette to mix new shades. So obviously birds are not flat and they don't have one colour. And I think the main thing that you want to do when you are painting birds is to constantly go back to your palette and mix up different shades, add in more yellow, more brown, more ochre, depending on the bird that you are referencing. And then using your brush really lightly so you can see I'm really trying to get a lot of texture. I'm using a De La Rowney graduate brush in the size 10, which I'm using for most of the page here, but I do later on move to a size 6. But I find that because it's a round brush, I can get quite specific details and I can get quite a good point with it. But I am just constantly going back and forth. I'm trying to basically get the base color down and varying the tone a lot, varying the colors slightly, and you can see at the bottom I started with a lot of white and lighter shades and then I'm putting in more browns and warmer shades for the feathers here in the wings. And also including a little bit of the pattern, but really I'm just getting down the basic shape. I can refine this later with coloured pencils, so when you're drawing the birds don't worry about it being super precise. Obviously we've got our guidelines from the pencil lines to work in, but they are really rough lines so I wasn't being super precise with them but it does help me to get the general shape but like I said you can either come back in with more paint later to refine some of the shapes or use coloured pencils and neo colours which is what I'll be using. So I am just using the gouache as a starting point. I'm trying to get a lot of texture in there because like I said there's obviously a lot of texture with their feathers and their plumage and so I'm trying to do lots of little strokes with my brush. I'm not doing really opaque ones. I'm kind of building it up slowly. You can see here where I'm using the brush to get a bit of a finer point for the beak. But I do find that's useful when I'm coming in with my coloured pencils to get that a little bit more refined. When I put on a little bit too much on my brush, I just tap that off and gently stroke it with my finger just to make it a little bit softer because I really don't want any harsh marks. So I'm changing the page here just to reference the long tail tip which you can see in the far left corner. 
And for this one, again, I'm starting with the lighter colours. I find it easier to work with the white and light coloured first. And you can always add in a little bit more, but it does help to keep things a little bit cleaner. And I'm using the warm grey here for the white breast, but I do come in with some cooler greys later with the near colours. Similarly with the collared dove, I am using my brush strokes quite loosely. I'm being quite light with my brush and I'm just following the lines I've already put down. I think one of the best techniques when you are drawing birds is to just be really light with your touch and build it up slowly. I am using the gouache quite thickly, so a lot of the time with my landscapes I will water it down quite a lot. But with the birds, because they are obviously not transparent, then I am using the gouache with a bit less water than usual. But I'm still being quite loose with my brush and putting it on slowly. And like I said, you can really work up the colour this way. I tend to avoid black at first. There is some black in this long tail tip, but I'm starting with the brown just to give it a warmer touch to it. And then using the brush again to add in the little details like the little legs. In the reference, the long tail tip was on an apple blossom branch, and I really like the colour that adds, I really like the soft pink. So I'm just mixing up some more gouache here and creating a nice pink just to put in the petals for the apple blossoms. And I'm starting with a lighter colour again first, because I find when I do mix up a green, it makes things quite muddy if I then go in with white. I am mixing up a green shade, again with my favourite combination, which is Oxide of Chromium and Cadmium Yellow. And again, I haven't actually sketched these in very, in very much detail. I'm just kind of going with the shapes that I'm seeing on my reference and also just following the shape a little bit more. I look at the reference a lot less when I am painting more organic shapes like these flowers and the leaves. But I'm going around the white areas that I've put in for the petals and I'm, I'm going in with the darker green first and then coming in mixing in a little bit more yellow to show a little bit of variation on the leaves. These are quite messy. I could obviously have gone in with a finer brush but I'm going to refine it more with my coloured pencils later. And it's the same with the feet here so I've mixed up with the red that I'd already put on for the petals and a little bit of yellow here and just drawing in the legs of this coloured dove. You can just do this with Neo Colour and coloured pencil if you prefer because obviously it's a little bit more precise but again I can refine these shapes a little bit more so I'm really not trying to get it perfect with this layer, these, this paint layer first because I know that I can come back and refine it again. So really I'm just kind of keeping things natural and organic looking. I don't want any harsh lines and I really want it to look quite soft. I'm coming in and doing the eggs here so I thought I would use that egg page and fill in this corner up here and I haven't drawn or painted eggs before but I really love the way that it looks and I really enjoyed adding on the speckled patterns in particular. They don't tie in with the birds that are on the page but I don't think that's a problem. I really just enjoy filling my sketchbook with things that are taking my eye and are exciting me and I just preferred the look of these eggs than some of the more plain ones. And now I am coming in with some black so this is the black gouache from Windsor and Newton and I'm putting that on top of the areas I already put brown on. The black is quite harsh on its own but just having that brown underneath means I can be a little bit more translucent with the black. It's kind of a bit more watered down, you can see there it's kind of grey, but I do find it works nicely just to have that base layer underneath. And the thing is with the really dark colours, especially with black, is you can't take it away. So I find that the brown works more of a guideline for me when I am then coming in with the black. I've got something to work on underneath that makes me feel like I can be a bit more confident when I am coming in with a really, really dark colour. I added on some shading there for some of the feathers and now on to the part which I enjoy the most. So I'm coming in with my luminance and Durant drawing pencils and then a mix of shades of my Neocolor 2 pastels. So I generally use these shades interchangeably. I'm constantly, like I was with the gouache, swapping out for different colours. I added on some white there for around the eye 
and I find that the Derwent Drawing Chinese White is the best colour that I've found for coloured pencils to really go on top of other mediums. And like I said, just as I did with the paint, I'm creating lines with really short and quite rough little brush strokes, but obviously with the near colours. And I'm not doing like a really big clump of colour, I'm going in and out and feathering it off, I'm being quite light with the touch, and you can see like I'll come in and out, I'll use the beige one, then I'll come in with some coloured pencil, then I'll come in with this pink near colour, and soften the edges, I want it to be really soft. I can also come in with the white near colour to soften things up even further. I'm also using a Van Dyke Brown here for the darker edges of the feathers. When you are drawing birds, there's quite a lot of pattern in there, so I definitely recommend looking very finely at the reference because it's not going to be a solid colour. And I do find that using the coloured pencils on their side adds a really nice softness, especially when you are including shading underneath the bird and around their tail. So I'm coming in with my coloured pencil here to add the eye. It's always nice to leave a little bit of white there just to make it look a bit more realistic, whereas I think if you're going more stylized, you could just do a big blob of colour. You might not be able to see the white very well on this video, but I do find it softens and it helps to blend the colours together. So I think whether you're using a white coloured pencil or a white near colour, it's always good to have when you have put down that first layer of colour with the birds, just to soften things up a little bit and add a little bit more texture. So I'm coming in with the darker coloured pencils for the leaves now. I've added a little bit of colour with a near colour for the stamens of the flowers. So you can see that here with this really bright yellow. And just adding on more of the lines on the leaves and defining the petals. Because they were so light, I really wanted to make them stand out on the page. So although it obviously looks less realistic like this, I think it works nicely and really makes them pop. I added in a bit more contrast around the petals and also come in with my green luminance to add in some more highlights. Then I'm using Neo Colours again and I will try and link down below all of the Neo Colour shades that I've used, but it is sometimes hard to keep track with because I am going back and forth with all these different shades. But to finish this page up, I'm just labelling everything, so I'm adding some numbers around the bits that I want to label what it is, and then I'll write down everything down in the bottom corner. I'm really enjoying filling my sketchbook in this way, like I mentioned in my previous video about journal style sketchbooking, which I will link up in the cards. So I hope that was helpful for if you want to paint birds. Just to do a quick recap, I would say keep things really soft, use your brush really lightly and build up the layers and the colour slowly. You want to have lots of different shades in there, so don't be afraid of going back to different colours and then blending things out with lighter colours like the white. So I hope you enjoyed watching that one, that you found the process interesting to watch and hopefully my narration has been helpful as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next Sunday with a new video. See you later!